H O T N X X O T F D E and the next step R E D O Z F okay ah uh, yes how many of those letters can you actually see, and how many have you memorized? I can see all of them, Dr. Avery. <sighs> Eunice. Okay. I memorized the last two, Tom, only the last two. If I can't get my license renewed... Eunice, you need to wear the lenses I prescribed. Contact lenses don't work for me, and glasses give me headaches. Then we'll change the prescription. But you know the DMV's gonna test you again anyway. I've memorized those charts, too. Mrs. Conrad called and canceled her appointment for tomorrow. Bill Warren wants to know if he can see you before he goes in for work, which means you have to be here at 8 a.m. Okay. Okay for eight? Yeah. Uh, Roger called while you were in with a patient. Uh, he says if you miss the two o'clock tea time, you pay for the beer. I pay for the beer anyway. And Daniel called and left a message here on the voicemail last night. What do you say? He said he'll call back. He said he's somewhere in France and uh, he sounded good. I mean, how do you not sound good if you're in France, right? Did he leave a number this time? No. Everyone on the planet has a mobile phone except my son. What the hell's the matter with that kid? The world on Daniel's terms. See you. Oh, no! <laughs> Let me show you how a real doctor does it. Since when is Tom not a real doctor, Roger? The eyes are the most important organ in the body, Roger. <laughs> Maybe at your age, Tom. They're the windows to the soul. Yeah? How the hell would Roger know? He doesn't have one. <laughs> oh. oh. Looks like malpractice to me, boys. Don't use your foot wedge, Phil. I got your foot wedge, Roger. <laughs> All right, what do we got, about 70? Yeah, plus 10 to the flag. That's what I'm talking about. You like that? It'll play. Yeah, that's good stuff. I'm over there. Yeah, I see. It's about three feet away. You want to ride or what? I'm old and tired. <laughs> You're old and lazy. I don't see you walking this course. It's mine, and it can wait. Get! It's Chip. Not bad. Go ahead and put out. I'll catch up with you. Hello. Uh, hello? Hello? Yes, hello? I'm sorry, I don't speak French. I'm Captain Henry Sebastian of the National Gendarmerie in saint jean pied port in France. Is something wrong? Are you the father of Daniel Avery? Yes, I am. I'm sorry to inform you that your son has been killed, sir. What? What do you mean? Daniel? Something happened to Daniel? He was caught in a storm on the Camino de Santiago. I don't even know where that is. It's in the French Pyrenees. On Tom. Tommy! Where are you going? Tommy! Sorry for your loss, Tom. Thanks, Father. I'm going overseas to bring Daniel home. Would you like to pray with me, Tom? What for? information for your itinerary is in here. I I'll cancel all your appointments for next week, so... You wanted to see the world. And he did.
should fly with me. What? You should fly with me. Yeah, right. Turn the car around, pack a bag, grab your passport, forget your golf clubs. Come on, a father-son trip. It'll be fun. When are you coming back? I don't know. So you don't have a plan? We agreed that if I let you take me to the airport, you wouldn't lecture me about how I'm ruining my life. I lied. You know, most people don't have the luxury of just picking up and leaving it all behind, Daniel. Well, I'm not most people. If I don't have your blessing, that's fine. But don't judge this. Don't judge me. My life here might not seem like much to you, but it's the life I choose. You don't choose a life, Dad. You live one. Yes. We spoke on the phone. Captain Henry Sebastian. Of course. I don't know why. I know it's odd, but I thought it would say something else. It's the same word back home. I guess I thought it would be different. Mr. Avery, if you're not ready to do this, if I No. Might... It's fine. I mean, it's not fine. I mean, I'm okay. Let's get it over with. Let's just get it over with. These are Daniel's belongings. Merci. This is everything he had when we found him. What happened? It was an accident. The weather in the Pyrenees is famous for being unpredictable, and I'm sure Daniel would have been warned by the locals. You are not close with him? Not since his mother died, I'm sorry to say. What was he doing out there? He was on pilgrimage on the Camino, walking the road to Santiago de Compostela. People from very different backgrounds, faith and generations have walked the path from here in the French Pyrenees to Santiago de Compostela, 800 kilometers on the northwestern coast of Spain for over a thousand years. We believers are told that the remains of Saint James, the apostle of Jesus, are interned there, and so we make pilgrimage. This is what your son Daniel was doing. Why was he alone? Many people choose to make the trek alone. The way is a very personal journey, Mr. Avery. This is the shell, a symbol of the pilgrim making the journey. And this, this is Daniel's passport for the Camino. It is to be officially stamped at every important stop along the route through Spain. And the first stamp is here, in Saint Jean. Buen camino. Merci. When you arrive at the end, the passport should look like this.
I have walked the Camino to the Atlantic Ocean three times. There and back. I will do it once more on my 70th birthday. God willing, of course. Daniel was my only child. We can also offer a cremation, if that is a more suitable way for you to transport the remains back home. Excusez-moi, est-ce que je peux asseoir ici parce que il n'y a pas. Sorry, I don't speak French. Oh, do you mind if I uh, sit here? Because there's no other seats available. Hi, I'm Joost. I'm from Amsterdam. Tom. Hey, Tom. I saw you on the on the train uh, this morning. We we came from Paris. We were on the on the same train. You're not a pilgrim, are you? A pilgrim, uh, a trekker, uh, a peregrino. You're not here to walk the uh, Santiago de Compostela. No, I'm here on family business. Ah. Well, it's not for everyone, you know. In fact, um, somebody died on the Camino this week. Only one day into the trek. Yeah, it's such a tragedy. Yes. But there's no mystery why I'm doing this trek. <laughs> you see this gut? <laughs> my older brother is getting married in Rotterdam in December, and uh, I want to fit into my uh, old suit. You could just buy a new suit. No, but it's the third time that he's getting married. Well, but wedding or not, I mean, I, I, a bit leaner, a bit lighter, it would make my doctor uh, and my wife uh, a bit happier. <laughs> no? Ah, merci beaucoup. <laughs> oh. It's for energy. Listen, my doctorate, I'm not going to finish it. You mean this year? I mean ever. You can't learn about the world in school. You're not just in school, you're at Berkeley. Take a semester off, sure, but don't throw away the last 10 years of your life. When was the last time you traveled abroad? And I'm not talking about for business. Nepal, Morocco, India. Papua New Guinea, Europe. I gotta go to these places. I, I gotta go, I gotta go. <sighs> Captain. Mr. Avery. I want to cremate the body. Santiago. 
Mr. Avery, if you pardon me, please, you're not prepared to go on this trek. You have no equipment or... I've got Danny's backpack and all this stuff. But you haven't trained for this walk. And no disrespect, you're more than 60 years old. So it'll take me a bit longer than most. You'll be lucky if you finish in two months. Then I better get started. We're leaving in the morning. We? Oui? Both of us. Came to give me another pep talk, Captain? I came to wish you buen camino, Mr. Avery. And to give you this. Is this a good luck charm? Something like that. You'll know what to do with it when you get there. Get where? Cruz de Ferro, it's on the Camino. You'll be there a month from now. You can read about it in the guide. It's a place of much significance. Mr. Avery, do you know why you're walking the way? I suppose I'm doing it for Daniel. You walk the way for yourself, only for yourself. Well, then I guess I don't have a clue, Captain. Mr. Avery, I have also lost a child. I wish you a buen camino. Enjoy your pilgrimage, both of you. Thank you. Tom. This is the way.
Sorry. Are you American? Yes. Americans are always late. Well, you speak English. So do you. Oh. It's my first time in Spain. You're not only in Spain, you're in the Basque country. We are in Nevada. Well, is there a room in the Basque country in Nevada? A room? You mean a bed? A bed, a room, it's all the same. I'm very tired. Fifteen euros for a bed and food, but it's late, so no food. No more cooking. Uh, no food, but still fifteen euros. Yes. <laughs> she was here. <coughs> Bathroom there. You're here. Welcome to Ronses Valles. Buenas noches. Pardon me, sir. Do you have any crepe poupon? I followed the same route as you to a point, um, but then I detoured up Val Carlos, and that's why I got here a couple of hours before you. My guidebook didn't say anything about any detours. Yeah, but that's because you haven't got the Dutch guidebook. The Dutch guidebook? Yep. You know, because we Dutch, we're always trying to find the quickest way to get to the next party. <laughs> because you know what they say, if it ain't Dutch, it ain't much. <laughs> Did the old woman feed you? Well, you're lucky. The meal is as grim as the beds. Yeah, that is. No, I can't take your food. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, well. mm. Pamplona in a couple of days. Hemingway running off the pools. <laughs> All that. I think I might stay there for a couple. Peregrino, of days. no drugs here. I know what I smell. I will call the Guardia TV. Ja. Ik kom de politie. Ja. Ja. Doe maar rustig. Ja, ja. Ja. Wat is je mean drugs? Oh, nothing. Well, well, nothing by Dutch standards. Just a little tobacco booster, yeah, to help us sleep. Hmm. You want some, Tom? No, thank you. Sure. I'm sure. I also have these options. Ambient earplugs. Have you ever walked the Camino, Senora? No, never. When I was young, I was too busy. And now that I'm older, I'm too tired. Hey, Tom, we should get a coffee here before we go, just to, uh, to get our motor running, no? Yeah, we'll, we'll have a quick coffee. Says 
yo se acompaña. Llegaron a Belén, que pedieron posada, respondieron de adentro con voz alborotada. Oh, look at cheesemaker, Tom. Oh, fresh, fresh goat cheese, my man. Come on, Tom. You haven't lived until you had goat cheese from these mountains. Hola. Are you gonna make it, fat man? Don't you worry about me, old man. Hey Tom, when we met in Saint Jean, you you said nothing about going on pilgrimage. I wasn't going on pilgrimage. But here we are. Yeah. You said you were on family business. I am. But you you have all the equipment for the uh, for the walk to Santiago. Yeah. Tom, that, that, that box with the ashes. My son. I'm done for the day, Jost. I'm staying here tonight. Here in this village? Yeah. Pamplona is a stone throw away. My feet are killing me. I gotta get out of these shoes. Uh, I'm sorry, but not me, man. Pamplona beckons. Okay. It's been a pleasure to me. Hey, I'm going to come in now. Llegas tarde, peregrino. I don't speak Spanish. We were expecting you. Expecting me. Yeah. Pilgrims, eh? Yes. We are always expecting pilgrims. Come, uh, we have plenty of pets and your foot is still warm. Hey, the Americans are here. Bueno, bueno, bueno. bueno. <laughs> Vamos, come on. The truth of the matter is confusing. No, Charlemagne had other ideas to extend his empire. He crossed the Pyrenees, but nothing worked out as he intended. This is Spain. This is Basque Spain. He tortured the Basques of Pamplona and allowed his men to have a little too much rest and relaxation with our women. When the Basque shepherds who lived around here heard what happened in Pamplona, they slipped into the woods. Then we, we Basques, killed them. Sorry, monsieur, but based on what I have read here, uh -huh. that is complete crap. <laughs> you won't find much truth in this book. Charlemagne. Roland, not Roland, Roland. This is part of French history, okay? Uh, no, not Basque. No. <laughs> the French, the French don't want to admit that the death of Roland 
was because of shallow minds and Christian intentions. Come on. Allez, bonne nuit tout le monde. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Night. Wait a minute. Signor, signor, I thought it was the Arabs that killed Roland. Oh, uh, bueno, bueno, bueno. Ah. Otra vez, otra vez. Te lo explico o qué? Cosa? Hombre. Pasará, no. Te lo voy a explicar. Vamos a ver. One of the guys said you're Canadian. You don't spread it around, eh? So how's it going for you out there on the road, Boomer? I'm Tom. You know, isn't Baby Boomer? You got all those horrible signs of that desperate generation taking its final breath, trying to screw the rest of us over one last time. Only thing missing from you, Boomer, is one of those stupid-looking ponytails and a collection of James Taylor songs on your iPod. I like James Taylor. But I don't have an iPod. Well, that's pretty amazing. What? No iPod, no cell phone or computer to keep you connected? Isn't it written somewhere in the Baby Boomer code book that you must own a certain percentage of anything Steve Jobs makes? So what is it, on pilgrimage to change your life? Something like that. Wait, don't tell me. Just getting over a nasty divorce and she took it all. Or maybe you're out to meet some young chicks and relive your college glory days. Believe me, I've seen plenty of that nonsense. Oh, I got it. You're seeking penance for screwing over your company retirees in some stock market scandal. You sound really angry. Yeah, sure, I'm angry. I gotta quit these. <laughs> and I'm really, really angry about that. And when we get to Santiago de Compostela, it's all over for you, my little friend. You're a goner. The end of the Camino is the end of my addiction. Spoken like a true addict. Spoken like someone who took 10 days to get this far. Well, at that pace, you should get to Santiago by the end of the year. He's on to our plan. But, you know, to be a bullfighter. My father wanted me to be a lawyer. I became neither. Uh, coffee is in the common area. Bonjour, Americano. Thought you might be staying at least a few more days here, eh? Funny. You know, these European guys are starting to get a little familiar. I want to get out of here while they're still sleeping off their hangover. Besides, I've got all the friends I need. Don't want any tag along, so. Well, be safe out there. You too, Boomer. Good luck with the quitting. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with whatever it is you're doing out here. We're all just taking a really long walk, I suppose. That's one way to look at it. Oh, I do have a cell phone. Yeah, well, me too. And an iPod. Sorry for being such an ass last night. I, I'm out here to get away from everything, and you just... Uh... Reminded you of it. Yeah, I get it.
Well, you're all right, Boomer. Even if you do like James Taylor. Camino.
Cordero. Spain is famous for its roast lamb. Mm. Yeah, you should try some. No, thanks. Much to my dismay, Peplona is just an ordinary Spanish city when the bulls are not running. So much for being a party town. But I made reservations to return here in July uh, during their week of um, fiestas, uh, the San Fermines. I would like to propose a toast, because we Dutch love to propose toasts. That we agree to meet here in July and run with the bulls, like real men. Like real crazy men. Well, I'm gonna come back. Blind shots, eh? <coughs> yeah. What are your plans? To move through Pamplona quickly, and as long as I'm sitting here, I might just order some tapas. Senor! Or they're called pinchos. I beg your pardon, Joost. In Pamplona, they're called tapas. Here in Pamplona, it's tapas. I just read that. You see, unlike the Dutch, guidebook, which may be directing you to the nearest party. The American guidebook is designed so that you don't look like a clown if you order pinchos when you really mean tapas. Senor. No. Senor, algo más? Uh, tapas, por favor. Tapas? Aquí no hay tapas. No tapas. No, no, no. Tapas es más de Madrid, del sur. Eh? Aquí estamos en Navarra. En Navarra son los pinchos. Eh? Las tapas y los pinchos parecen lo mismo, pero, pero no lo es. Porque la, la tapa viene como en un plato grande. ¿eh? Los pinchos van como en platos separados, más pequeñitos, más trabajados. Tiene una presentación, vamos, está convertido en una tradición. ¿Quiere pinchos? And then we'll make you Dulcinea. Buen Camino, fellow pilgrim. Oi, Buen Camino. My name is Joost. I'm from Amsterdam. Dutch, huh? Got any drugs? Oh, I love this girl. It wears off quick, I promise. You know each other? Sort of. What are you looking to score? Oh, something for sleep. I've had trouble sleeping for the past, I don't know, a couple of years. You folks mind doing this drug deal while we walk? I've got some Ambien. Or something stronger, if that's your pleasure. <laughs> I love this guy. It wears off quick, I promise. Come, come with us. Uh. Don't wait! I tried to quit once, but then I thought, why? My grandmother, she drank and she smoked her entire life, and she lived to be 103 years old. Now, what does that tell you? It tells me that everyone is trying to quit something always as an ancient relative they use as an example of why not to quit. I suppose it makes me a cliche, then. You said it. But I'm not the one trying to quit anything. Yeah, well, we keep walking at this pace. Quitting isn't going to be the problem. Surviving will be. <laughs> Does this guy ever stop to smell the flowers? <sighs> this isn't a race. No, it isn't. And why does it piss me off so much that I haven't seen him stop to take a break? And why does something that should be inspirational make me so... angry? Totally irrational. Same could be said for this entire journey. I wonder how old he is. Older than us. Cordero. Nothing like a few pounds of lamb to help shed the excess weight. But it's part of the Camino experience, no? I mean, you can't come to Spain without having their roast lamb. Donde se cruza? Donde se... Where the path of the wind crosses that of the stars. What do you think the waist is on this guy? 32? More like a 25 or 6. 
Well, a man can dream. <laughs> but you can do this on a bike? Where the hell are we walking? Oh, that's ridiculous, man. California. Nice to meet you, Rabbi. Oh, actually, I'm a priest. <laughs> well, you can understand my confusion. Yeah, a lot of people make that mistake. Brain cancer. Surgery left me with a terrible scar. I wear this yarmulke to cover it up. They didn't get it all, you know. Cancer. Said it'll probably come back. Who knows about these kind of things? Only God. Anyway, they say that miracles happen out here on the Camino de Santiago. You believe in miracles, Father? I'm a priest. It's kind of my job. You're a Catholic. I don't practice anymore. You know, Mass at Christmas, Easter, that's about it. Here, take this. No, I can't take your oh, groceries, Oh, please, Father. take it. A lot of lapsed Catholics out here on the Camino, kid. Besides... <laughs> Thank you. Dawn breaks like a flow through the hall. Never should have called. But the heads to the wall and the long. Venga, peligrinos, bienvenidos. And if you turn, venga, venga, peligrinos, bienvenidos. Go to the wind. Out of John. Goodness, oh my goodness, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't mean to do that, oh, oh my god, oh my god, I thought I was out here all alone. You thought wrong. Oh, oh yes, hello, I'm Jack from Ireland, I'm Jack from Ireland. How long have you been out here, Jack from Ireland? From the Camino or in this particular spot? You pick. Well, the Camino, well, jeez, uh, it's hard to say. This spot, well, um, it's hard to say that too, but I think this place means something. This place means something? This, this place is brimming with significance. That's the problem with this whole damn road. Problem? Metaphor, man. You're out walking all alone and suddenly in the middle of nowhere you see a dogfight near a cheese farm. What does that dogfight mean? And despite its literalness, the idea of a pilgrim's journey on this road is a metaphor bonanza, friends. The road itself is amongst our oldest tropes. The high road and the low. The long and winding, the lonesome, the royal, the open road and the private. You have the road to hell, the tobacco road, the crooked, the straight and the narrow. There's the road 
stretching into infinity, bordered with lacy mists favoured by sentimental poets. There's a more dignified road of Mr Frost. And for Yanks, every four years, there is the road to the White House. There is the right road. And then you have the road which most concerns me today. The wrong road, which I fear I must surely have taken. Well, Jack, maybe a dogfight near a cheese farm is simply a dogfight near a cheese farm. Ah! Okay. That's good. That is very good. Huh. Dogfight near a cheese farm. Huh. Maybe there's no such thing as metaphors. Maybe I should adopt a more conservative attitude instead of trying to trickle meaning out of every curve in the road. Christ, I haven't had an original thought. In months. <sighs> Writer's block. You know what that is? Any of you? Writer's block? And I am a writer. Okay, so... The reason I'm out here walking the Camino. Writer's block. I figure the sooner we get the small talk out of the way, the better. Now you know why I'm on pilgrimage. Great. Yeah. Hmm. Mailbox full. Ah. All from my editors, who probably think I'm drinking again. Which isn't a bad idea. Well, they'll get their book. Maybe not when they want it, but they'll get it by God! Ooh, can I, um, bum one of those, please? Ah, uh, uh, yes, sure, sure. Thinking you. So, uh, what's your book about, Jack? The Camino, of course. Oh, of course. What about all you? What about all of us what? Oh, why are you doing the Camino? Most of the pilgrims I've pulled say their walk to Santiago is for religious, cultural or historical reasons. You're taking a poll? No, informally, though I have been keeping track of most of the pilgrims I've met along the way. So far, less than 15% say they're doing it for health. Fewer than 5% say they're out here looking for a miracle. Miracles are in short supply these days, Jack. Well... If you don't mind, I'd like to include you in my fault. I do mind. Very much so. Oh, uh... Would it be all right if I walk with you for a bit? Well, I, I don't know about them. Oh, uh, OK. No, but, but, but it's OK. It's, it's cool with me, man. Really? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm Joost. I'm from Amsterdam. Joost? Um, right. Hey. I mean, I'm, I'm not here for God or miracles or any of that stuff. I'm, I'm just a fat Dutchman trying to uh, lose a few pounds. So you're doing it for health reasons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, yeah, you could more or less say that. Yeah. No, well, um, would it be all right if I put you under the category of doing it for health for my poor? Yeah, man, sure, whatever. Really? Yeah. yeah. Joost? Dutch? Oh. Huh. Thanks. Would you like to try some of this? Sure. It's, uh, it's Turkish. I, I hear it's good for writer's block. <laughs> you may be right, yes. <laughs> yeah, man. Tom! Hey, Tom! Just because I'm Sure. So what's her story? Tom met her in a refugio, walking the Camino to quit smoking. That's all I know about her. She's sexy, but complicated. He seems like quite a stiff. I met him in Saint Jean. He's, uh, he's an, op an, um, uh, an eye doctor from California. An ophthalmologist. <laughs> Didn't come here on pilgrimage. Seems like it was more uh, like an accident. 
I started my pilgrimage in Paris, Yost, three months ago. And if I know one certainty about the way of St. James, it is that no one walks this Camino by accident. No one. He um, carries the cremated remains of his son. Got caught in a bad storm over the Pyrenees. First day out. Oh, you're kidding me? No. He carries the, the box in his backpack. He leaves little, little piles of ash all along the Camino. That's brilliant. I mean, tragic, of course. But brilliant. Um, do you think he'd uh, want to talk to me about it? I think he'd sooner shove that walking stick down your throat. You're sick. Right? The reason you're out here. You're ill and dying. How do you want to work? That's good. But I will get it. No, you probably won't. Next town is Torres del Rio. Towers on the river. Your Spanish is pretty good. Yeah, well, the guidebook's stress. Learn as much of the language as possible before you start the walk, so. I thought you said something about not wanting any tagalongs. I did. Like the last 15 kilometers or any indication, walking the Camino with you is kind of like being alone, so. But hey, you want me to buzz off? That's cool. Next town, I'll go my separate way. It's not like there's a thousand routes to get to Santiago, so you might have to suffer bumping into one of us from time to time. I'll take my chances. Doris Del Rio, then. He's in a bad mood. <laughs> He's been in a bad mood ever since I met him. Well, death has a way of doing that to you. What do you mean, death? She doesn't know. She doesn't know what? <laughs> she doesn't know what? What doesn't she know? This town is so short of water that the locals store it up in winter for use in summer. I don't see anything about bars. There's an albergue called the Casa Santa Barbara. Oh, yeah. It's the only one. But it has five stars. I don't care how many stars it has, as long as it's got a toilet. Si. Hola. Peregrinos. Si. Hi, welcome. Bienvenido. Hola. Ah. Ah. Hola. I am El Ramon, eh? Oh, I'm, I'm Joost, I'm from Amsterdam. Ah, oh, nice, nice, good, good. Come, come, come with me. Come along. Come along, please. Uh, passports, please, passports. Now? I need passports. Uh, passports, everyone. Yes, thank you, passports. Passports, please, I need passports. Um, is there a... Uh, this is my very own and very special El Ramon stamp. You won't find a stamp like this anywhere else on the Camino. Uh, I am user, uh, this is the Ramon stamp, and I will stand your passport with the Ramon stamp. The Ramon stamp. The Ramon stamp. Perfect. This is the proof you have been with the Ramon. Yes, as I was saying. Ah, I, um, hey, you must be hungry, yes? No, yes? Um, ah, yes, you're tired, of course. Well, but you have come to the best refugio in all of Spain. Uh, is there a baño I could use, please? Uh, oh, yes, 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 of course. Uh, yes. Uh, is there? Uh, it's a bit more serious, I'd say. Uh, one moment. Huh. Good? Good? Yeah, good. Uh, good. good. <laughs> The only pilgrims here. The only ones alive. Tom, should we stay? It's a bed, a meal, a few hours sleep. Obviously, we've interrupted something. Well, that was uh, interesting. A bit cold out there. Who's next? 
maybe we should stay, no? Did I want to ask how much he's charging for the night? Because if it's more than a couple of euros, it's too much. Yeah, I, I second that. Aye. All right, when he comes back down, I'll ask him about the fee. But I don't think we're going to get a straight answer from El Ramon. Well, it could be a while. Okay. I'll go up and ask him. Them. I'll go with you. Yeah, me too. Let's all go. What are you, all five? No, just scared. Oh man, it's four and a half hours to the next albergue. Really? Right, well, we've got to think about setting up camp for the night. No way. It's getting dark. Hey, Boomer, Tom, we got to camp out. Now this, this is a true pilgrim experience. Cheers to that. Even though I hated camping as a boy. True pilgrim experience. What do you mean by that? Oh, well, I'm talking about tradition in the purest sense. A true pilgrim walks the Camino with nothing. He has to live off the land. He has to accept the kindness presented to him. And he has to carry his goods on his back. Pilgrim is poor and must suffer. That strikes me as extreme to say the only way to be a true pilgrim is to imitate what we like to think a true pilgrim is. Should have. Pilgrim dress himself as a beggar, even if he isn't. Do we honor the poor by imitating them? I don't think that pilgrims 500 years ago ignored the creature comforts of the road any more than we should now. Yeah, and what about pilgrims on bikes? Or, or pilgrims that do the Camino on horseback? No, uh, tradition would dismiss bikers, at least. Biking or riding requires less suffering and less work. The difficulty of the walk is inherent in walking. Right. But I don't think we have to artificially add more hardship than is already there. That, in my opinion, is being a false pilgrim, not a true one. If you were a man, I would challenge you to pistols at dawn. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Boomer? Finally, an American without an opinion. Take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, sunshine. Oh. Hey. Where are the guys? Out gathering some provisions from the local farms. Like true pilgrims? Yeah. So you weren't even going to say goodbye, Boomer? Yeah, well. What are you doing out here, Tom, besides taking a really long walk? Why do you care? Just told me you were a, a doctor? Yeah. What do you practice? I'm an ophthalmologist. An eye doctor? Yeah. Oh, so you, uh, you help people see the world a little better, huh? Yeah, that's one way to put it. You got it. No, 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 no. Oh, oh. Three cheers. 
prayers for the true pilgrims. Hot bread and coffee for everyone. Oranges, apples, see? We're living uh, off the land, eh? This is the way it's supposed to be. Uh, hey, Tom. Hey. Hello, eh? Sleep well? Yeah. No, no, gracias. Do we have knives? We don't need knives. Let's rip it apart. Orange, Tom, eh? Huh? Orange? Nothing. Coffee on the go. Here we take them. Yeah, fine. Tom? If you're the last thing in the world you want to do is have a conversation with me. You're right about that. Tom, your son. Yos told me. I, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Yos told you, huh? That figures. I don't know what to say, but... The way you touched me, grabbed my arm, just... I mean, my other life, my life before the Camino, I was married. I was married and I was pregnant. My first, my only. But my husband was not a kind man, so I terminated. I got rid of my baby girl, Tom. Didn't want the son of a bitch to have two of us to beat up on. Sometimes I hear her voice, my baby. I know it sounds crazy because she never got to take her first breath, but I imagine what she would have sounded like. And sometimes I hear her talk. Sometimes I swear I can hear her. Sorry about that. Yours. My son was almost 40. Yeah, but he'll always be your baby. Well. We have arrived. I'm gonna get us a bottle for three. Oh, here, you'll need an extra hand for that. Hola. Look, Tom, I, I want to apologize again. I'm really sorry. Can we talk about something else, please? But I hit you with everything I had, and you took it. My mother taught me that only a coward hits a woman. How'd she do that? She whooped the hell out of me every time I hit my little sister. Well, I finally got the message. My ex could have learned something from your mother. Smoke them if you got them, eh? I smoke across this whole damn country, Wilma. So you said. There's a whole world out there to beat you up plenty. You don't need to go looking for people to pile on. Glad to have given eye dogs instead of a head shrinker. 
First consultation is free. Let there be wine. Let the drinking commence. <laughs> was inspired to write his first book afterwards. So, I said to him, the last thing in the world you need to publish and the last thing I am willing to write is another bloody guidebook on the Camino. I mean, <laughs> how does one follow the Codex Calixtinus anyway? The what? Codex Calixtinus, Liber Sancti Jacobi. Devotees of the way regarded as the first tourist guide. That's right, it is the source. Attributed to the writings of Pope Calixtus II in the 12th century, it is a work of wonder divided into five folios. Book one, Antologia Liturgia. Book two, De Miracoli Sancti Jacobi. Book three, translates the writings of St. James. Book four, the lesser known banned by the church in Rome, details Charlemagne's vision of St. James, instructing him to destroy the Moors. But it is book five, folio five, which most concerns us. Historians believe it is the first book ever written on the pilgrimage. So, the dilemma for me is to come up with something that feels contemporary yet pays homage on. Homage to the ancient traditions of the way and what it means to be a true pilgrim in a modern age. Huh? Christ, you're a bore. <laughs> I beg your pardon? An arrogant bore. Well, there you have it. Proof once again that Americans can't hold their liquor. Oh, oh. There's a man with the Eston Villa patch on his bag. Oh dear, I think this pack's getting ready to eat one of its own. That's just it, Jack from Ireland. You're not one of us. You think you're better than us because you're writing a book. True pilgrim. All right, all right. True oh, okay, pilgrim. Okay. Like you would know. What did you use to pay for this wine here, huh? How many credit cards do you have in your wallet, Jack from Ireland? How many true pilgrims? use their credit cards to get out of a true jam along the Camino back in the Middle Ages, you jackass from Ireland. You are a true fraud. That's what I think you are. Fraud! <laughs> Over here, everybody, this man is a fraud. Police! Hey, hey! Over here, gentlemen, arrest this man Dom, for being Dom, a fraud. Dom, right, Dom. What you talking, man? Yeah, only talking. You're good at that, Dutchman. Let me ask you something. Is there anything in that Dutch guidebook about having some common courtesy, keeping your mouth shut about other people's private matters. What the hell are you talking you know about? What the hell I'm talking about Joost from Amsterdam. Or maybe you've smoked so much hash and popped so many pills you can't remember anything you say or do anymore. Hey, what do you think of the boomer now, eh, Sarah? Whoever the hell you are. So, <laughs> friends, the question is, what does it take for someone to become a true pilgrim on the Camino? Is that right, Jack? How about death? How about dying on the Camino? Would that right? Would that make someone a true pilgrim? Would that qualify for your damn book? I told him this my fact. My fact. Tom, Tom, come on, man. It's my, no, Tom, it's my pack. It's my pack. My
How do you say I'm sorry in Spanish? Lo siento. Lo siento, señor. Buen camino. Gracias. Adiós. I don't really remember very much. That might be a good thing. Thank you for bailing me out. You can thank my credit card. What on earth is going on in my heart As it turns as cold as stone It seems these days I don't feel anything Unless it cuts me right down to the bone What on earth is going on in my heart Don't stop It's in my mind I want to tear it up I'm trying to fight it Trying to turn it off But it's not enough It takes a lot of love It takes a lot of love My friend To keep your heart from freezing To push on till the end My own mind I intend to read it's going on in my head You know I used to be so sharp Do you agree to letting me use the story in my book? We can call it even. Not a chance. Well, I could still include it anyway. Change the names. You wouldn't. <laughs> I would. As far as anecdotes go, it's one of the best from my journey so far. My friends. You know, my patients, they're going to read your book with the wrong impression of me. <laughs> Do you honestly believe that your mates from the country club would waste their time reading my book? Good point. What was your son like? Daniel's story's got nothing to do with any deal. I have to explain why you're out in the Camino, Tom. I can't just introduce some crazy drunk American into the narrative without giving him purpose. Crazy drunk American, thanks. Look, I can read his obituary at any internet cafe along the way, but I can't imagine it would shed any light on, on who he was or, or what he meant to you. He was my son. What do you think he meant to me? Daniel was a lot like you. Smart, confident. Stubborn. Pissed me off a lot. May I? Thank you.
Mr. Frank. Are you just getting to Burgos? This very moment. <laughs> Listen, you've got to stay at least a day. Turn to the cathedral. El Cid is buried there. The Chuck Heston film. Let me buy a weary traveler a drink. I think we'll let you perform. They've come in handy. They usually do. Maybe a couple of tapas do here. I don't have to tell you, but this Spanish coffee is really strong. Yeah, I know. You know, I can't drink it in the afternoon. Otherwise, I don't sleep a wink, no matter how far I walk. Is this weather beautiful? Oh, yeah. He flashed the, uh, he, he flashed the you well, yeah. so Hey, that kid took my bag. That kid stole my bag! I'll go door to door if I have to. No, 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 Tom, up here. Why not? It's Gypsy Tom. So what? It's, it's all Gypsy out. So what? Listen, you start knocking on the doors here, you might not be happy with what you find behind it. Having her backpack stolen will be the least of your worries. Then we have to file a police report or something. No, cops hate gypsies. Don't want anything to do with it. Not in Amsterdam, not here, not anywhere in Europe. Sorry, boy. Son, I know you're here. Just give me the box. Tom. Just give me a little box. You can keep the pack. Tom, come on. Just give me the box. How are you doing? Oh, this is great stuff, Tom. What you're saying, I gotta get it down. New gear. I'll take a bus to Madrid and fly home tomorrow. Come on, Tom. This whole thing was stupid. Bloody thieving gypsies. I understand your anger, senor. My name is Ismael Villalobos. My son stole your property. He wishes to return it and apologize. Lo siento mucho. It is as you left it. Everything's there. Everything. My son has the son of himself. His family. And yours as well. This is the problem with how Europeans see the gypsy people. As thieves. And beggars. A proud community. Well, your son is not helping your cause. A very, a very dark day for me. I wish to extend an invitation to you and your friends to be my guests at my home this evening. I insist. It will be an intimate gathering. You will not be disappointed by the food or the company.
This is what you call an intimate gathering. By the Dano standards, the Gypsy wedding will sometimes have 2,000 guests. All close personal friends. Actually, yes. You are taking your son's remains to Mushia. No, to Santiago de Compostela. You go to the cathedral in Santiago for the pilgrim's mass and the blessing. You must continue across Galicia to the sea. There is a shrine in Mushia. La Virgen de la Barca. Go there. Place the remains of your son in the water. Do this for him and for you. Ishmael, I'm not a very religious man. Religion has nothing to do with this. Nothing at all. Ishmael, please, I can take it from him now. He will carry it to the very edge of town. Not one step less. That is his punishment. For now. But he couldn't have known what was in the bag. Don't you think you should cut him some slack? And what if it were your son? Stealing is bad enough, and wrong. But what my son did could have brought more than shame to our community. Ah, yes. You mean like a curse? Please. The simple mention of it. Paco. Venga. Dale payo su cosa. Le mira a los ojos y le pide perdón. Perdón. Mira. Lo siento. Our children, they are the very best and the very worst of us. Ishmael. Adios y gracias. Buen camino.
self-respecting pilgrim in the community would ever stay in a part or the decadence of it is absolutely appalling. My treat. Really? For all of us? Uh, yes, um, I need to have some laundry picked up. Some uh, clothing needs to be washed. Such a glorious morning here, which just heightens my sense of acute loneliness. There's traffic on the Camino today. Pilgrims queuing up to bear witness to the anxious state of a writer who has forgotten how to... A writer who has... lost his way. a man, no longer a child, could not have known that of all the bags at his disposal, the one he artfully made his own contained the most precious cargo of all, the remains of Tom's only son, Diamond. is clear, Tom's is becoming clear, but Yost, for whom kindness is an instinct, is further away than ever. Yost. None of you stand so tall. Armies march to war, pilgrims march towards a new kind of peace. You gonna invite me? Sure. I couldn't sleep. Me neither. Where's Yost when you need him? Hey. Oh. Make yourself comfortable. Didn't know you were expecting company. I'm not. Uh, hi, could you direct me to the nearest alberga? Oh, I seem to have interrupted something. Please, come in. Speak of the devil. Hey, voila. A bottle of liqueur de Rujo. It's uh, from Galicia. It's made of 18 different herbs. And they're so secret that they have to be squeezed by blind monks. Oh. Thank you. God save the queen and our fascist regime. Any room at the end? You're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, lovely. This is so summer to my room. <laughs> mm. Voila. Thank you.
Dear Lord, may this stone, a symbol of my efforts on the pilgrimage, a symbol of my efforts. Dear Lord, may this stone, a symbol of my efforts on the pilgrimage, that I lay at the feet of the cross of the Savior, weigh the balance in favor of my good deeds that day, when the deeds of all my life are judged. Let it be so. Amen. Church, Jack, have a look. Oh, I come from the church, there's a lot to answer for. Temples of Tears, Tom. Don't go in them anymore. You've been taking an awful lot of notes. That's right. End of your writer's block. Thank you. Glad to be of service. I trust you'll treat us all kindly when the book goes to the publisher. Oh, you know, the darker it is, the bigger the sales. That's what my editors will surely be asking for. I understand. You know, when I was an undergraduate at Trinity College Dublin, I wanted to be W.B. Yeats or James Joyce. But good writers usually die broke, so after I left college, I wrote for travel mags. I thought I'd do that for a while, put some money away, and then get down to the novel. Twenty years later, here I am, still writing for travel magazines. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. It's the life I chose. Jack, you write whatever you want about all this. What you saw, how you felt. You write it like it happened. You write the truth. I'll do my best. And after Santiago, home, back to the real world. If you want to call it that. You know, Ishmael said that after Santiago, I should take Daniel's ashes to Mishia. What do you think about that, Boomer? I don't know. But he seemed to think it was very important that I go. Oh, it's all gypsy hocus pocus, man. Well, you're on your own, Tom. Santiago is as far as this Dutchman is going. <sighs> Me too, mate. I've been away for three months. I gotta get back. Santiago de Compostela for me, Tom. It's the end of the Camino for me, too. And at the foot of St. James, I shall put these down once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry? I swear. Oh, good luck with that, yeah, yeah. It's a long way to Santiago. It's a long way to go. It's a long way to Santiago, to the sweetest saint I know.
Well, while I'm here, now. Supporting God of glory. Oh, it's him. St. James. Um, tradition commands that pilgrims approach the statue on their knees. El Cid, St. Francis, Van Eyck, kings, queens, millions of pilgrims, they all collapse to their knees out of gratitude. Um, <laughs> Can I have your bus, please, 
Yeah, sure, sure, oh, sure. Is that beautiful? Do you want to see something? Yes, yes. Your name is Joseph. Joost, Michael De Witt. Joost, okay. Sarah Marie Sinclair. Jack Emerson Stanton. Thomas Avery. Where did you start at the Camino? In Saint Jean. In uh, Saint Jean Pierre. Saint Jean Pierre Fort, okay. In Paris, in Notre Dame. Really? Mm -hmm. Canada. <laughs> Have you walked the whole way? Yes, we did. Uh, I did. Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. you didn't enjoy it. Oh no, no, it was fantastic. So, what is your reason for walking away? What are your reasons for having done this pilgrimage? Um, I mean, do you have some kind of religious or spiritual motivation or religious? Yes. I mean, um... leprechauns. I was uh, looking for leprechauns at the end of the road. I am. Um... I needed to lose weight. Um, uh, well, I... It's also because my my wife didn't want to sleep with me anymore, but it's because I'm, I'm too fat. I thought that I... I should probably travel more. I was a writer. I stopped writing. And now I'm writing again. His passport with the official stamp of the cathedral. And this is your Compostela. It's in Latin. It's all Latin written in Latin because this document dates from the Middle Ages. Ah, uh, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, I gave you the wrong name. Yep, but I've already answered it, you know. Uh, I see that, but um, could you please change it? Okay, as you wish. Name, please. Daniel Avery. Here you are. Thank you very much. Writers, they always want the last word, but this? This was never about quitting these things. She knew that. I needed a new suit anyway.
Yeah. I came here to bring you home. I don't have anything to take back. Yeah, you do.